Okay then, so we're putting this carpet in, laying it in place and getting the fit together. And this is a molded carpet, so it's generally just a drop in situation here. But you do have to do some trimming. As you can see over there, they give you uh, excess material on the sides of it, of course, because it's just necessary so you can do your final trimming. You always would rather be long than short. <laughs> Applies to a lot of stuff, doesn't it? But uh, one thing that we're gonna have to deal with right away is this is my Creaky Harbor Freight stool I'm sitting on, and if you watch Bus Grease Monkey's videos, you hear the same noise in his videos too. Uh, these hold downs. This is where the back seat bottom slips in. And so this, we're going to have to trim this around this so it will lay down. You don't want anything raising the carpet up like that because when it raises up, it pulls it. And it's pulling it. And this, see how this is drawn inward at the rear? You don't want that to happen. So we're going to need to make sure that we have the carpet laying down flat. So once we do that, we're going to make those cuts and then we're going to start trimming the sides and... What goes on over here is you have a sill plate that, that screws down and it extends out about like this and then it comes over to a lip, but the lip is not very, the lip's only maybe about an inch, inch and a quarter, something like that, maybe a little bit more. So you want to be very careful on your trimming because if you just eyeball this thing and you don't you got to make sure it's down on the floor and all that stuff. So you want to eyeball this carefully and trim even more carefully because you can't put carpet back. So it's kind of a kind of a touch and go thing here because you got the trim, you got those sill plates, and then here at the bottom of the B pillar, you have a little uh, trim piece that bolts in there too. So we have to. You're gonna have to bring those pieces out and just fit them and then, you know, go from there. And do very, very, very minor cuts at one time. This is tedious work. But we'll do the rear first and then once we get the rear fitted in and then we can go back and bring the front in and do it same way. So, okay, let's do some trimming, shall we? I've been sitting in here working away at this with my shoes off and uh, trimming this away and so I've got a good fit on it now. I'm pretty well satisfied with this on the first side I've been doing. So I'll show you the general idea here. What works well is that, you want, of course, you want to be sure that the carpet is all the way down. There's nothing holding it up. And then you just want to lay it over and just get it up to the edge of the pinch right there, as it is. You know, you want to be able to push on it. It's gonna, it's gonna stick up the way it's molded. There's nothing pushing down on this, but my hand is. But still, see, it's still pretty close up there, and there's enough material on this that it's gonna cover it, no matter what. So that's very nice. I like that. It's looking awesome. So I did the same thing up here. Of course, this cut is not exactly even, but it's, not, it's going to be under the molding. So, you know, you don't want it. You really don't want it laying over. I need to take a little bit more material off that. But as I said before, you want to be conservative with your cuts. I think that was one of the biggest cuts I made right there because I just had a lot of material just, you know, over hanging over here. So, uh, you know, just move it back and forth and look at it and move back and forth, look at it and move back and forth, look at it. There's no real way to mark it. To, to cut along, but uh, I think I am going to straighten that up and take just another sliver off of that one, just so it looks nice. And then here at this B pillar, you, know, you don't have to deal with this unless you're a four door. Uh, two doors don't have this because they just got the big door here. But on these four doors, you got a little garnish that goes in right here, and it looks odd because there's a little bit of carpet that's going to stick out right there at each end of it, but that's the way the factory did it. That car out there, that dart, 
is the same way. You go out there and look at it. That's just the way they did it. Otherwise, you're going to have a hole down here. Now, you're going to have a wind lace that's going to come down here. We're going to trim that wind lace. So, it's hopefully going to look decent. But you don't have to, you know, if you can think of a better idea, by all means, go ahead and do that. But uh, that's what I'm going with. And, uh, you know, I can always come back and adjust it if I don't like it. Because we're right here at the door and we just thought this is taking a few screws out and do a little trimming. So we'll see how that works out, but that should be fine. And this goes in first on the four doors. You have to put this piece in and then you put the, the other two in because it's recessed. So uh, that's the way that is. So just again, just be very, very, very careful with your cuts. Uh, just cut, it's tedious work, you know, it just is. So have a good pair of scissors. I've got a good pair of singers, scissors there I've been using to cut. Probably maybe it's carpet shears be better, but I'm not going to worry about that too much. And the other thing is, before you go nailing down these pieces of trim, you need to make sure that you know where your holes are for your seat belts and things like that. I've got one here. I have to mark. What is that? Something's going right, right here. Who knows? Uh, anyway, so it's just right there. So I'm going to mark that with a little X on my marker. And there's been a few different ways people talk about doing these holes. And that's always been a kind of a thing for me is getting these in the right spot. And, you know, it's another one of these deals where you don't have one chance at it. So uh, they, they say... I think and the way I like, well, the way I think I'm going to do it is, is I use a soldering iron and just melt it out so it doesn't fray. But anyway, whatever way, you can put an X and cut an X into it, whatever's going to work for you. But just make sure you do that. we got one here, we got one that's under me here for the lap belt. And you have a seat mount, which is back, right back here someplace. Let's find that, make sure we know where that's at too. And then we'll go to the other side. Yeah, I think I feel it right there. Nope, oh, it was off. It's back here. See, that's what I'm saying. Make sure. <laughs> okay, anyway, but that's the deal. So, you know, I urge you take your time with this because you cannot put carpet back. Um, Law of physics. Once it's cut off, it's cut off. It doesn't grow back. So anyway, uh, you'll do fine with it. So let me just continue with this, and then uh, I'll get around to the other side back behind me over here and start trimming that. And once we get everything cut, we'll put the trim in. And that will be pretty much it for the carpet. It's not a hard thing to do. All right. You guys can relax for a little bit. I gotta keep working. <laughs> I think we're coming along pretty nicely on this carpet. So, essentially, what I've done is I've just spent a lot of time going up and down the sides of this carpet to get it where when it's pushed all the way down, it's essentially just flush with this rail or fence or whatever you want to call it. And it's critical that when you're doing cuts, whatever, or whatever, you need to make sure that the thing is in position. This is a molded carpet, so you kind of got an idea where it's supposed to be. But you need to make sure that it is down all the way against the floorboard, pushed into the corners, and all that. So, uh, I really, besides the sides over there, so I'm really all the trimming I had to do other than at the front up here, I had to trim quite a bit off the front because it's made longer, which is a good thing. You don't want it, you know, there might be things in, in a particular car, you know, something's, I don't know what it would be, but you know, you just need to have some length built into it so you can trim it as needed. All carpet kits are going to be that way, so prepare for that. You don't want to cut it back here because you got a sewed edge right here that's supposed to be like that. So don't mess with that. Don't mess with that. Don't cut it off right there. It looks stupid. 
don't mess with it. Don't ever mess with it. That's how I like to say. Don't ever mess with it. So anyway, up here we had a few things that needed to be done. Two main things. Number one was that I needed to cut out the hole for that dimmer switch. So this carpet kit, and probably all of them, give you a grommet that goes in here. So you can just pull this up out again and see what it looks like from the rear. And what I did is I took my soldering iron. I took my cheap one, not my good one. So I took my soldering iron and got it nice hot as it go, which is not real hot. And I made a little mark in there with a punch. What's this camera doing? Mark in there with a punch to kind of orient it. And then I just started working it out with the soldering iron without trying to, you know, just going out further and further and just melting the hole out and trimming it with the scissors and a little slag, I guess you could say. Until I got it, I, this thing is floating in here. It's not, it's not, um, in other words, the hole that this grommet is in, sitting in, is bigger than, but bigger than this hole here where the button goes through, but it's smaller than the, where the lip comes to. So it floats, so you know, it's not pulling the carpet one way or the other if you don't have it exactly the same. It's a really good idea, I like that. So, and then up here, these two bolts and the cutouts are for this thing. Now, this is the manual washer button, if you can believe it. You take your foot and push this thing, pump this thing to pump up the, the, the washer fluid. It pushes it out. When you push on this, it pushes fluid out on the windshield. <laughs> So if your car has, if you have a fancier version of this car and it has electric washers, you don't have that. You don't have to worry about it. But I do have it. I did have to worry about it. But I didn't worry about it very long. It's pretty easy to cut that out. So, and then what I did with the, you have to locate your seat mounts. On um, this car has a buck, uh, has a bench seat rather, and so I only have four mounts. I've got one here, one here. One there, one back there. And then you have seat belts here on the B pillar, and the same back here. You got one on the other side of the tunnel and one back over here. So I did the same thing. That was kind of a tedious to do that because you try to be careful with it. And I've got a marker mark on that one where I thought I had located it. I shouldn't. Here's the idea don't use a marker. So I have to try to get that off there. But. Anyway, the buckle for this, the, where the thing bolts on, probably will cover all that anyway. But just be careful with that. I took a, <clears throat> somewhere around there, I've got my little owl, owl, whatever you want to call it. There it is. A little thing with just a tip on it. It's not a screwdriver. I just worked around there until I got where I located the hole, and then I did the same thing. I just, as we say here in the south, wallered them out until they're the right dimension and locate where they're supposed to be. So you need to be real careful with this. It's not, you know, you know some of this stuff, again, <laughs> hate to traumatize you, but you only have one shot at this. So if you cut it in the wrong place, that's it. That's where it's staying. So you, <laughs> so I, I spent a lot of time going back and forth this carpet, lifting, I didn't have this one in there then, but back there, back lifting that side, of the down, poke, poke, gently poke. So I finally got it. So. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start putting in my sill plates. And remember, we got if you have a four door with a, a sedan with a B pillar, you need to put in that little trim plate there in the in the bottom on the bottom of that thing first, and then you put your sill plates. And don't tighten that thing down. It's got two screws in. Don't tighten it at first. Just get it placed in there, and then bring the other ones in. And you're going to have to kind of fool with them a little bit, and then. Essentially, you're done. Now, we still have to, actually, we still have to put on the front kick panels. And uh, I think one of these screws were missing. They take a special length screw to put them in, so I'm going to get those. I've got some insulation also going out, so I'll show you that. Uh, back on the regular restoration 
series thing on this interior that I'm doing also. But so one of you at least asked about the carpet video, so I wanted to I wanted to go ahead and do this as its own video, and I'll post this up. But let me get going on those pieces of trim.